All right, today's project is a long time coming. I've been wanting to take a stab at this for the longest time, but it's never got around to the other things I wanted to do. And it is a landscaping level rake, or leveling landscape rake, soil leveling rake, I don't know what it's called, but it's those things that are like a, uh, matter of fact, here's just a picture of it. I have limited time, as always, so let's just get into it. These are the materials I'm going to be using. The head of the rake is four feet wide. I'm going to have it 10 inches long. So I got some aluminum tube that's eight feet long. And I got two of them. They each cost about 20 bucks at the hardware store. I'm just going to cut them perfectly in half and that's going to make the four rungs. Then I'm going to use this narrow aluminum plate to tack weld the ends. And then this angled aluminum I'm gonna use in the middle, and that's also gonna have a hole in it to, uh, so I can uh, mount this handle. This handle is the only thing that's still, it's pretty heavy, but it's the only thing I had uh, scrap. If that doesn't work, if it's too heavy, I'm gonna use a telescoping paint roller handle. Let's see how I did. You might be asking yourself why I didn't use an angle grinder with a metal cutoff. Um, it's because I'm, it was a little bit more comfortable with the hacksaw, and this is at one shot, and essentially perfect. Okay, let's take a look at what 10 inches will look like. Is it crushing? Oh yeah, look at that crush. Okay, well I changed my mind. That takes just way too long. this 12 inch finishing blade, it leaves these little aluminum flakes. And they're about the size and they feel just like what you'd see in like uh, gold schnapps. <laughs> yeah, I can make myself uh, some an aluminum schnapps. All right, time to drill a hole in these. This is what's gonna hold the handle line. Yep. So I had this steel pole, which was what I was gonna use, but I really just don't feel like drilling a hole in it right now because it's pretty thick. Instead, I'm gonna use what I was talking about earlier. This is a uh, paint rolling brush. So I'm just gonna actually use this little hole right here with a, uh, apparently spider eggs in it. This is easy. This is really not hard at all. It's, Got to pay attention to what you're doing and uh, the details, which I'm sure I've missed plenty, but it's looking good so far. The last thing that I'm going to do before I start welding is is check to make sure corner to corner and the other corner to corner are both equal. That way it'll be square. Hey! No, no, no! What's going on over here? <laughs> I see some cool chalk in the pond. What's that doing in there? Um, I was, I want him to see the color, and, and I want him to wait. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. Have you seen the fish? <laughs> Alright, so it's been a while since I welded, and the last time I welded, the only time I've welded, was this monstrosity. Oh, man, if I could only show you these welds. They're pristine. Being aluminum is a whole nother story, that, which I've never tried. I've got some uh, scrap pieces I'm gonna just do a test weld. Let's see. That's not good. All right, so that clearly didn't work. No idea why. Maybe I need to clean it. Maybe it has some type of uh, coating on it. Turns out you need aluminum spool in your MIG welder to weld aluminum pieces together. Didn't consider that. I have steel in my MIG welder. So I either need to go buy some aluminum spool or actually they have these sticks of aluminum where you heat up the pieces of aluminum you want to put together. You heat them up and then you put the stick of aluminum on it. Kind of like basically soldering it sounds like. Um, so I may try that. In my research, I found I've been using wrong terminology. This is not a MIG welder, this is a flux core wire, uh, welder. And decided to get some aluminum welding wire, solid aluminum, no flux, so it's not actually meant for this. But I'm gonna try it anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this weld. It's so artistful. It's like an ink block test. What does it look like to you? To me, it looks like a butterfly dog that get hit by a car. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hold very well. It's all right because I have something that's known to work. Aluminum rods. This is basically like soldering. You just heat up the metal and then push the aluminum rod to the hot metal and the hot metal melts the aluminum rod and it mends them together. I'm gonna join these two copper pieces as a practice run. Yes, I do have a fire extinguisher, so safety first. Pretty small pieces of aluminum, so this should go pretty fast. Alright, it's been 17 minutes recording. I'm gonna stop recording and put a timer because I'm taking up way too much time. So I figured out what I was doing wrong. I wasn't applying direct heat. Like it is pointing straight at it, straight at it right now. It's doing it at an angle. So I'm gonna remember you guys who won the championship final that we just watched. Who won the championship final? That we just watched. Djokovic. Yes. Oh boy! Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's melting right on there. All right, so this is gonna be experiencing shear. Um, push it in, so let's. Wow, this is really strong. I mean, that's pretty darn good considering that that basically is never going to happen in my application. Completely not worried about it. And that's 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 some serious force right there going going down. This is not a weld. This is not 
steel and this is not a weld, so completely happy with that. Proceed with plan B. And it is all nice and roughed up, nice and clean. I've roughed up all the edges that are gonna possibly make contact and I've also taken the corners down. Let's put a slight bevel on them, some sand. Let's go ahead and do it. Do some mending, soldering, welding, whatever you wanna call it. Making the aluminum stick together. Two with reinforcements. There we go. Oh, there it goes. Ready to go. That is so much better. Oh my goodness. Clap in the middle. That will not make a good level break. So, and do something about that and quickly. Uh, I think I better turn it upside down. Sucks. Although heating metal causes it to expand, which would kind of cause it to concave this way, if I was heating it this way, I don't think that's what caused it to sag down. I think gravity is what caused it to sag down. All right, now I have this uh, supported more close to the middle with uh, two retaining wall blocks. Ah, oh, it's starting to do it again. Oh, all right, so of course, starting to down pour here. Move this back in the garage. able to finish it look at that fantastic I ended up having to just clamp each little point right here to keep it from blowing and once I did that boom worked fantastic to attach the handle I put in a clevis pin it's a little pin 
put the hole in the end and then a, a retainer uh, thing so I don't ever get to worry about it getting loose if I put on uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep this handle but it's gonna use it for right now I have a lot of things to test this out on but I don't have the sand or topsoil currently to, to, to use it I'll go ahead and push it around the grass for a little bit a little wobbly that could Ugh. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use the conduit, put it on here, and uh, to prevent it, this from wobbling, I'll just put some uh, spacers in between. All right, so that was a lot of fun making this myself. Saved a few bucks, learned a new skill, and got the satisfaction of uh, doing something myself. It's a fantastic feeling, self-sufficiency. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you around.